Welcome to our August edition of What's in Bloom at the Ruth Bancroft Garden. Each month we put together a selection of plants that are in bloom in that particular month and make a sheet that we hand out to our visitors uh, highlighting those plants. So we're going to walk you through that starting with the first one, Thunbergia alata. Uh, this is sometimes called the black-eyed Susan vine and it's in the family Acanthaceae and comes from East Africa. It's a really prolific blooming plant, blooming all summer long and into the fall months, uh, and then going dormant during the winter months. Uh, it's a, a great addition to the garden because it's so festive and so full of color for such a long period of time. Thunbergia alata. Here we have a shrub in the hibiscus family, Malvaceae, named Pavonia missionum or Pavonia missionum, depending on how you'd prefer to pronounce it. And it's got these wonderful orangey red flowers. Uh, it's not a tall bush, uh, just a few feet high, but spreads pretty widely and makes lots of flowers over the summer months. Pavonia missionum. This shrub is one of the wild buckwheats in the genus Eriogonum, a genus that's uh, very well represented here in California. And this one is Eriogonum arborescens, meaning becoming tree-like. Well, it really isn't so much tree-like as it is bush-like, and it actually isn't as large as its uh, neighbor here, which is Eriogonum giganteum. So uh, maybe you can see the flower difference this one's a little whiter uh, when it's in full bloom, and this one a little pinker. Uh, and the leaves are definitely much smaller on Eriogonum arborescens. Uh, but a long blooming period in the summer months, an easy plant to grow in California, very drought tolerant, Eriogonum arborescens. Amongst the large number of species in the genus Aloe, there are a few that have hairy flowers. And uh, this is an example of one of them, Aloe Levranosii. So it comes from Yemen, and all those that have hairy flowers come from one side or the other of the Red Sea, either like this one to the north of the Red Sea on the Arabian Peninsula, or a few of the others occur to the south of the Red Sea in Eritrea, Ethiopia, and Somalia. In any case, it's not a trait you see in aloes, uh, very often. And uh, this one, Aloe Levronisii, has both a yellow flowered form that we featured on last month's What's in Bloom and a red flowered form that we see here. Uh, the mouth of the flower is kind of yellowish green and hairier than the rest of the flower is, but really makes an extraordinary effect when it's backlit and the hairs glow. Aloe Levronisii. This is a plant in the Amaryllis family, Boophany distica. The name distica because the leaves are in a fan, all in one plane. And uh, here at this stage, the plant is in bloom, and the new leaves are just beginning to come out right here alongside the flower stalk. So these plants occur widely in Africa in many countries and could be either winter rainfall or summer rainfall, with the timing of the flowering and the leaf production varying from locality to locality but a beautiful flower display, Boophany distica. This is an uncommon Arabian aloe named Aloe armatissima. The name means well-armed, and it's kind of an odd choice of a name because yes, it has teeth along the edge of the leaves, but many aloes do, and these aren't particularly large as aloe teeth go. In any case, it's a, a wonderful uh, compact aloe with uh, more or less uh, tapering triangular leaves, and yellow flowers. Uh, not quite in flower yet as we tape this in late July, but uh, soon we'll be opening Aloe armatissima. This shrub is known as Apache plume, and it's native to the southwestern United States and across the border into Mexico. Uh, it has very uh, finely divided leaves, a, a, a sparse textured plant, and these little tiny uh, white flowers but they're followed by these wonderful fruits that are what give it the name Apache Plume. Uh, they catch the light nicely, and they're very long-lasting and very ornamental. Uh, Apache Plume is an easy plant to grow, uh, and quite cold-tolerant, and uh, a wonderful addition to the garden because of the way it catches the light. Fallugia paradoxa. Gasteria is a genus closely related to aloe, and they all come from Southern Africa. 
Uh, mostly they're on the small side, uh, generally less than a foot across, but this is one of the largest gasterias, Gasteria excelsa. And uh, as you can see, the leaves are uh, triangular tapered leaves, and uh, the inflorescence is much branched. You can see how many branches there are here. And the flowers begin at the bottom and work their way upward. So this particular raceme here is just beginning flowering, whereas this one uh, being up towards the tip is towards the end of its flowering. Uh, but a wonderful summer flowering plant from South Africa and very easy to grow in the garden. Uh, one of the wonderful things about gasterias is how easy they are to propagate. So here we have a leaf that was hit by a falling branch and it has been uh, severed. And you can see how it's callousing nicely at the base. And that can easily be inserted into the ground and grown to make a new plant. So they're very easy plants to propagate. Gasteria excelsa. The larger agaves are bold sculptural presences in the garden. And when they come into flower, even more so with their towering inflorescence. This one is agave weberi from the northeastern part of Mexico. And it looks rather similar to agave americana, but a little bit smaller and with much smaller teeth, sometimes no teeth at all. Um, its normal color is a blue-green, so the colors you see in it now, these yellows and pinks and purples, are the colors it takes on as it goes into bloom and the rosette is starting to die. So the chlorophyll withdraws from the leaves as they die and you get all these wonderful autumn colors. Uh, and that means that that's the end of the line for this plant, but fortunately it makes offsets, so those will continue. Agave weberi. Puya is a South American genus in the bromeliad family, and some of them are really on the large side. In fact, Puya raimondii uh, is the largest plant in the entire bromeliad family. Uh, this one, Puya laxa, is a more modest sized plant, and the name laxa means that the flowers are spaced out from one another and not bunched together. And while, I, while that might make it a little bit less then stunning from a distance, the flowers are wonderful up close. They've got pink flushes on the uh, sepals and then uh, blue-green uh, fading to purple-black on the petals themselves. A really wonderful color combination, but subtle unless you look at it up close. Puyolaxa is notable for its leaves, which are furry because of uh, trichomes or uh, specialized cells on the leaf surface that, that uh, catch water. And because they stick out from the leaf, they give the leaf a fuzzy appearance. Also, the leaves are succulent, which most Puya leaves are not. Puya laxa. The genus Scabiosa belongs to the family Caprifoliaceae. And this one is a Mediterranean native, uh, Scabiosa ochroleuca. So the uh, flower heads are a little bit on the greenish yellowish side of white. Uh, but lots of them, rather diffuse and uh, long blooming in the summer months. Scabiosa ochroleuca. This plant is Rucellia equisitiformis. Uh, it comes from uh, Mexico, but it does very well here in California gardens too, with its beautiful tubular red firecracker-like flowers. Uh, it's a, a free blooming plant and its name Equisitiformis comes from the appearance of the uh, shoots that look kind of like horsetails, Equisetum. Uh, but it's not related to that at all. It's in the family Plantagenaceae, uh, but a wonderful garden plant, Rucellia equisitiformis. Erythros means red in Greek, and that's the source of the genus name of this plant, Erythrina bidwillii. Uh, Erythrinas have a big distribution uh, from the Pacific through Asia and Africa and over to the Americas. Uh, and this one is a cross between two American species, one from South America and one from North America. Now it makes a nice shrub in the summer months, but then it goes dormant in the wintertime. We cut it clear to the ground and then it comes back and does this again every year. Uh, it flowers all during the summer and fall months, but uh, oftentimes in bursts and right now, uh, it's a little on the sparse side, uh, but more flowers will come. Erythrina bidwillii. Cacti in the genus Ferrocactus are commonly known as barrel cacti because they oftentimes have a big, robust, barrel-like plant body. Uh, usually they're very strongly spined. This one, Ferrocactus patsii, 
has less, uh, less spiny body than most of them do, uh, but it's a wonderful plant for its uh, big robust form and also for its uh, bright yellow flowers followed by yellow fruits. The flowers, uh, actually there's none open on it right now, it's near the end of its flowering season, but the fruits are very long lasting and look like little pineapples. And these yellow ones that are on the plant now are from last year's bloom. So they last for an entire year until the next blooming season comes around. Ferrocactus potsii. The genus Hesperello belongs to the agave family, agavaceae, and it's related to the yuccas. Uh, this plant is Hesperello nocturna, so named because the flowers are nocturnal, open at night, and pollinated by moths. And uh, so it's got very tall inflorescences and uh, little flowers with peeled back uh, petals and blooming over a long period of time. It's not nearly as common in cultivation as its relative Hesperello parviflora, and that's a day flowering plant with pink flowers that are visited by hummingbirds. Uh, Hesperella nocturna, although it's less common in cultivation, is an easy plant to grow, a little bit bigger than Hesperella parviflora, and with these tall inflorescences that last all summer long. Hesperello nocturna. Echeveria is a wonderful genus of rosette plants in the Crashlaceae family or stonecrop family. And most of the species come from Mexico. There are some that go as far south as South America and one that crosses the border northward into Texas. But Mexico is the home of most of them. Uh, many of them have a tight rosette uh, like this one, Echeveria lilacina. Uh, but there's a whole series of hybrids with large, roughly leaves like this one, Echeveria lace. And these are hybrids of Echeveria giboflora, a large growing species from southern Mexico. And the original plant only had a little bit of ruffliness on the leaf, but that's been exaggerated by breeders to get these amazing plants like Echeveria lace. Uh, the general flowering period for Echeveria lace is in the late summer through the fall and into the winter months. So just beginning now, and there are the first flowers on this one here, Echeveria lace. Echeverias belong to the stone crop family, Crashulaceae, and their leaves come in all different colors. Uh, some of them, like this one, Echeveria conte, have a very powdery pale leaf surface. And in that respect, it really resembles a Dudleya. But Dudleya is a different genus, a more coastal genus that occurs along the coast of California and Baja California. And this is an Echeveria, not a Dudleya, but looking very Dudleya-like. Echeveria conte uh, has uh, wonderful pink flowers that are orangey on the inside, if you look into the inside of the flower, and uh, it's in full bloom during the summer months and ending by the end of summer. Echeveria conte. This plant is a South African bulb named Dremia media. Now, uh, it used to be in the family Hyacinthaceae, the hyacinth family, but now that family has been moved into the asparagus family as a subfamily called Psylloideae, the Scylla subfamily. And uh, in any case, it's not a common plant in cultivation with very narrow cylindrical green leaves and many, many uh, spires of little white flowers or off-white flowers in the summertime. So it's in full bloom now. The petals curl back in a uh, wonderful way and uh, it's got lots and lots of inflorescences coming out of one clump. Dremia media. This plant is Aloe cooperi, uh, an aloe from South Africa, and it's one of a group called the grass aloes. Now these aloes uh, grow in grasslands, and many of them are quite small and uh, blend right in with the grasses amongst which they grow. But Aloe cooperi is uh, a good deal larger than that. So this plant is almost five feet tall. So that's uh, a really large grass aloe. Now these aloes generally aren't widely grown in California because they come from a summer rainfall environment with dry winters, the opposite of what we have here in California. And many of them just don't do well here because of that climatic difference. But aloe cooperi is much more adaptable and uh, you can see just blooming away here with these wonderful flowers that look sort of like candy corns. Aloe cooperi. Grevillea is a large Australian genus in the Protea family 
and uh, a few of them are trees, but mostly shrubs, and a lot of them have been hybridized and uh, many new ones coming on the market year by year. Uh, this is one called Grevillea King's Fire that hasn't been on the market all that long, but it's been very successful here at the garden with these beautiful uh, sort of bottle brush flowers, uh, red flowers, and uh, very attractive to bees, which visit it when the flowers are open. Uh, this plant has uh, flowered almost nonstop and uh, has been a great success here at the garden. Grevillea King's Fire. The genus Xantherea is an Australian group known as the Australian grass trees. They're not really a true grass, but their leaves look grass-like. This one is a is Xantherea quadrangulata. And as you can see, the flower stalk is coming up, a blue-green stalk. And then the part at the top, uh, looking like, kind of like a cattail, is the part from which the flowers emerge. Uh, at this stage, in, in late July, the flowers have not yet emerged but they'll emerge like little white stars from the green of the upper part of the flower stalk. Uh, Xantherea quadrangulata is uh, a, a bluer species than most. Oftentimes the leaves are greener than this, and the uh, inflorescence comes out later in the year. Our other ones bloom in the springtime. Uh, here you can see last year's flower stalk that has turned brown, and protruding from the stalk are little uh, seed heads because it uh, made seeds after flowering. And then these two here are the new ones from this year just about to come into flower. Xanthorea quadrangulata. That brings us to the close of our August What's in Bloom. But remember, there are many, many other things in the garden that are wonderful to see or in bloom, but don't last a whole month and so on. So it's a wonderful thing to come here to the garden and check it out for yourself. If you're not in the area and can't do that, our website has a lot of interesting things to see too. So we have our plant highlights and I post a new one of those every month and they go back for years with featuring all sorts of plants that are in the garden and our social media postings on Instagram and on Tumblr, uh, lots of plants to be seen. And we also have wonderful educational programs here at the garden. So check it out.